Hey guys and welcome back to another video on the Road Builder YouTube channel. Today we're going to be going over 5 things I really wish I knew when I started Blender. Recently, I've been kind of feeling myself. I've been getting better at Blender every day when I hop on, and every time I learn a new trick, I'm just like astounded that I didn't know it before. So the first thing is kind of something stupid, but it definitely affected me when I first got onto Blender. The person who was teaching me Blender at the time told me to never use modifiers. Okay, now modifiers is this huge list of a bunch of different stuff that's awesome. And they told me to never use modifiers because it was cheating. And uh, that's just so stupid. That's like the most stupid thing I've ever heard. And it really affected me in the beginning of using Blender because I just never used any of these. And now I use a modifier pretty much every build. Like top modifiers for me is decimate, subdivide, mirror skin and solidify those are the top ones for me and that's like the dumbest thing on our list it barely made the list but i did want to go over it in case someone has also told you that they said i can't use modifiers because that's cheating no no modifiers are an awesome tool to help you make crazy things in way less time so now that we got the dumb one out of the way let's get into the stuff that's actually going to help people first things first guys snapping tools this oh this made me just so much better in so much less time so let's say i want to build a fence i'm going to scale this down and i'm going to scale it up like this i'll go and go ahead and do like this and shift d we'll put one more of those like in the middle why not actually i should probably delete these and do my loop cuts first just to save time so say we want to have a fence all right i'm going to do a loop cut and then i'm going to do s and z make those a little bit smaller perfect and then i'm going to do another one here s and z make them smaller Perfect. Now I'm going to grab this, duplicate it, and I'll duplicate it one more time. Put one right here. And look at this. If you click on this magnet, you could click what you want it to snap to. Now I'm going to use face right here because that's just what makes the most sense for what I'm showing you. But this is the most overpowered tool that I use literally every single build now. So you want to click on your face and then you're going to go hover over the face you want it to snap to. So since this is a fence, I'm going to hover over this one and I'm just going to press E. And as you can see, it auto snaps straight to it. Now, since I have a middle pole, I should probably do this. Click E and then click on this face and click E. And it's just so, so nice. If I wanted to snap, it just doesn't matter. You could snap anything. And then if you wanted to do like to vertice or something, say I wanted to only have this vertice. Let me go ahead and switch this to vertex. I'll click here and I'll click here. And as you can see, it attached to that vertice. I don't know why you would want to do that, but hey, you might want to someday. So guys, the snapping tools right here, magnet tool, whatever you want to call it, amazing. One of the best tools in Blender by far. I use it every build. All right, guys, the next thing that I use like every single build after I figured out is called proportional editing. It's right up here. And oh my gosh, would this have saved me the most amount of time ever when I was starting out. So say I wanted to make an egg, all right? When I was starting Blender, I would have went and got like a cylinder and then went to my face select and then beveled it okay something um something like like this I, I probably should have scaled this in first so just like went like this and then beveled the top and then went down here and beveled the bottom and uh, as you can see it doesn't really look that good so i would have grabbed this and like just stuff like this to try to make an egg and uh that's that's silly guys look what you could do with proportional editing so we're just gonna grab in a uv sphere go to our vertice select mode click on the top one right here lock into our front face and check this out we have an egg now you could do this if you press g and kind of affect what all you're grabbing and if you do that you have an egg proportional editing is the coolest thing ever if you wanted to add for example variation in like i don't know a branch or a hill this is just the best thing ever guys you could do so much with it it's like sculpting without sculpting all right, guys, up next, another one that is just so, so nice to me. I'm going to call it extrude tools. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but I use these all the time. So check this out. If I wanted to make a barrel, all I would do is grab every face, unselect the top ones. And if I do Alt E, you have three different options, extrude faces, extrude along face normals and extrude individual faces. Now, since we want to extrude individual faces, since this is going to be a barrel, click this and then you just go up or down and this is going to extrude them so they're a little bit separated from each other like so and then if i wanted to add in like a loop cut scale those out looks pretty much exactly like a barrel needs to look and then all i would do 
and set this just a little bit, extrude it down, and now we have a barrel. Of course, minus the, uh, the things on the outside. But this isn't a tutorial on how to make a barrel. It's just showing the extrude tools, which are so, so helpful. Now, guys, one of my friends, when I first started Blender, always did this, okay? And I never knew how they did it, but using a reference photo. Now, I don't mean go on Google and type in something and then have it on your other screen and then trying to build it in Blender. I mean literally putting it in Blender and tracing it. Now, I'm not sure uh, if this is very frowned upon or not. I know it's definitely frowned upon if you use someone else's work, but if you go like, let me type in cartoon tree. All right, so I just got an image off of Google. I'm gonna do shift A image and then a reference. Then you just load in your reference image like so. And I always like to use like, like bad art. I don't know. <laughs> you don't wanna use like reference art or anything cause that's someone's actual assets. But like this, say I wanted to build this tree. I can literally trace it out. So what I'm gonna do, mesh cube, go into edit mode, vertice select mode, alt M at center. And then here is our vertice. So I can place this down here in the middle and then control click to do all of these branches. So say like this, like this, click on this one again, perfect. And then go back to this one up here. Nice, nice. Uh, of course you would take more time than this. I'm just speeding through it for the video's purposes. And then this one could go up here. Then we just go to our modifiers tab, add a skin, and as you can see, we have traced the tree. Now, of course, there's a lot, uh, there's still a lot, you know, that would, would need to be a bit edited like so, but it's very, very easy to use this to just trace what you need to do. And it helps a lot if your client or whoever you're building for has already paid for reference photos and they just want you to build them. So some people will buy concept art and then look for a 3D modeler to actually make them the art and as you can see if we get rid of the image we now have a tree now you guys might be saying bro that's a it's a square tree that's kind of tough just go to another modifier guys subdivision surface there you go and then edit it a little bit to fit your needs and of course you can use the other tips as well that we've learned like proportional editing to go ahead and select this and move like this this end back you can move this end forward so it's not all just on one plane you could do so so much so tracing an image is another thing that's super super helpful all right guys the last thing is a free blender add-on called loop tools and this saves so much time so to add it on go to edit preferences type in loop tools and then you'll just need to check this little box and then to find it you'll go over to this tab right here click on edit and then we'll drop this down and go into edit mode and right here we have loop tools now a lot of people might be like hey how does that help me at all so i'm gonna make for example i suppose another tree something super super simple okay like this and then i'm gonna add in a loop cut say i want a branch right here okay so i'm gonna grab these two faces and then click circle and now of course i'll have to scale it down so it kind of fits and usually you would do this on a cylinder not on a on a square but now i have a circle that can go out this way to build a whole another branch to the tree i don't know why I, I made it a square at first to be fair and then i could go down here add two loop cuts grab this face right here and click circle now there's a lot of stuff you can use right here and i don't even know what all of it does but circle is definitely like my favorite one i think you need uh, more than one face so we'll grab these four faces right here one two three and four and then we're just gonna click on circle. Scale this down a little bit, and now we have another tree branch. Now I'm sure there's a ton of other ways you could use this and make some crazy stuff, but it's just something that if I was new on Blender and I knew about it, it would have saved me so much time, so much time. But guys, that is gonna wrap it up for this video. If you did enjoy and you wanna see more content like this, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day, later.